Sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, thank you for joining everybody. It looks like we have six attendees, Assad, Brian. Uh, hi, Jose, Tim, welcome. Um, today we're gonna discuss LIDAR, specifically software technologies and its implications in the federal funding, uh, federal R&D funding ecosystem. Um, there's a lot of money out there, especially now with this new $2 trillion stimulus. Um, lots of money has been infused into all sorts of agencies. Um, specifically for this technology. And I'm going to just touch on some opportunities. Um, Brian, you raised your hand if you have a question. Anyone has a question, please feel free to um, ask in, the, in the, uh, the chat box. If there's anything I can't answer, I'll try to answer uh, via email. Welcome. Uh, looks like we have uh, Chad well joined us. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So again, this is upcoming federal funding opportunities for LiDAR specific technologies. So first I'm gonna kind of give you a brief breakdown on federal R&D grants. Um, then I'm gonna touch on the LiDAR specific opportunities and then we can get into uh, what it is we do over at Eagle Point. Um, so just to put this in perspective for you, um, in fiscal year 2020, the government put aside almost $162 billion uh, for federal R&D funding. What's going to be most relevant to the companies on this webinar are going to it's, it's going to be the red right here, um, private industry. So that that that's usually an interval of between thirty and sixty billion dollars set aside for private industry every year, um, and it, it's been multiplied by a factor of at least four or five ever since that uh, two trillion dollar stimulus. Um, the government's really trying to get the money in the hands of of, of companies like yours. Um, and, and we'll get into why in just a second. So what is non-dilutive funding? Um, you know, it, 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 the, the definition is in the name. So basically you're not giving up any equity. Um, you don't have to bring up any, if you don't have to bring on uh, any outside board members, advisors or decision makers, and you ultimately maintain your IP rights. So um, I'm not gonna say it's superior to dilutive funding. It, it, it is symbiotic. A lot of times this grant uh, federal R&D funding is, is kind of, uh, you know, it can be considered an incubation to get you to the next level uh, and the VCs will, you know, for VCs to want to invest in you. And I'll get more into that as we go get into this webinar. Um, but, but yeah, so non-diluted funding really, it, to me, it, it's just the best form of funding if you don't want to hurt your bottom line and, and ultimately maintain your IP rights. Um, so. The, the kind of the tech, main gamut of technologies that we focus on is pretty much every technology that you could think about outside of the life sciences. So if you're a uh, company that has any of these technologies listed under defense or uh, cyber, um, you know, so, so I know this is a LiDAR specific category, uh, tech webinar, but within any LiDAR company, as I'm sure you all well know, there are a lot of different technologies involved. And so in our approach, we try to apply for as many opportunities as we can for as many aspects of the technology of your technology also. Uh, so that's part of our, our kind of secret sauce. And, and again, there's going to be a lot more in that uh, here down the line. So here are some more of the kind of broader uh, technology sectors that we, we touch. So energy materials, um, I don't know if advanced, adv yeah, advanced materials, um, and so, so VR, augmented reality sensors, drones. Um, we pretty much touch every opportunity as long as it's non-ITAR. So ITAR is international arms trades. Um, so we won't touch those, but that does not mean we don't deal in uh, highly classified and sensitive technologies. Um, there are a lot of opportunities that, that fit that bill without being ITAR. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. So these are six, just six companies that got their start with grants. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Semantic, Qualcomm, uh, you know, iRobot, uh, and this is just six out of over 60,000 companies. Uh, I highly doubt the number 60,000. I think it's much more than that considering uh, now, I mean, just last year, I think there were over three, 4,000 companies that got uh, funded just within three or four agencies that we work intimately with. So three, these are three main technologies, two of which you probably use every day. Um, GPS, maybe less now that a lot of us are locked in at home, but internet, GPS, and Siri, uh, these all got their start with federal R&D funding. 
And, and so there's really two kinds of types of federal investments. Uh, you have agencies that are seeking solutions to their agency challenges, and their main end goal here is to have a contract with you. So the R&D is great, the R&D money. So, you know, the one and a half million dollar phase two prize is amazing, but the real meat on the bones here is the contract at the end. And, and, and we're going to get more into that. So basically, this is a flow chart of how that works. So for example, a, comp uh, a program like AppWorks. AppWorks, they work specifically, uh, well, they actually got their start specifically with the Air Force. It's a funding catalyst for the Air Force. They've shown so much efficiency, um, either matching or surpassing the pace of VCs and private investors that they have gone on and taken the Marine Corps and National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which is gonna have a lot of implications for your LiDAR tech, the NGA. Um, so they kind of took them under the wings and this is kind of how it works. So they post uh, focus areas and, and, and you kind of present it in an open, to open topic forum um, and, and they see something they like and they'll make an investment, which means you'll get an MOU, a memorandum of understanding that says, at the end of the day, the government is gonna be a client. Um, they wanna see how you perform on your R&D. Once your product is uh, through prototype and commercially viable, then you have the biggest business in the United States of America as your client, um, the U.S. government. So we work with a lot of these programs, and I'm going to get into them. And just here they are. Um, so I mean, DHS, SV, SVIP, so Silicon Valley Innovation Program. AFWorks is probably one of the main programs we work with. X Tech Search is more Army specific. Um, I mean, Army Applications Lab, Army Research Lab. These are all also uh, programs within the Army. Uh, infrastructure that 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 are funding catalysts, the defense defense innovation unit, and also uh, DoD RIF, the Rapid Innovation Fund. So, uh, so the second reason is really just uh, the altruistic motivation. So you know the United States wants to maintain its position as a world leader in in high tech and modernization, um, you know, advanced technology for citizens and job creation, and then also you have the capitalistic motivation. So a lot of people have no idea that when they get a dollar of a grant, that dollar is gonna turn into $2.30 for the government, just by virtue of you building your business and paying taxes. So they do see in the return on their investment of almost two and a half dollars on every dollar they're giving you. Um, so, so there is a capitalistic motivation. Okay, so this is one of my favorite slides, just because of the experience I've had with former clients. So, and, and, and the truth to it. So for every dollar invested in, in your company and in, in federal R&D funding, this is a recent study done by the Milken Institute, uh, you can expect about $8.38 to be invested by the private sector. So angel investors, venture capitalists, uh, private investors. And, and so that's really, so, so you know, before, uh, clients work with us, they're usually in the series funding or, you know, begging, you know, trying to get as much money as they can from, from private investors. Um, so this is kind of a way to turn the tables. Uh, now that you've gotten investment by the government, that's really the hallmark of quality. You've shown that you have deep, impactful tech, a reviewer in VC who's reviewed thousands of applications, uh, who's very familiar, who's probably one of the best technologists in the country, has, has been ready and willing to invest in your company. Um, and so that is kind of the stamp of approval. Not only that, you've gone from pre-grant to through prototype and now commercial viability. So you'll notice that instead of you uh, putting yourself in front of VCs, VCs are gonna be coming to you. Um, and, and that's just the truth. Uh, I've seen it happen time and time again. Um, okay, so R&D grant mechanisms. Okay, so there's two really, really two fundamental ways that this money is allocated, okay? You have the small business innovation research, and then you have the, well, then you have the SCTR, which is within the SBIR program. Um, that's a phased funding event, and, and there are criteria. So for SBIRs, for example, you have to be 51% or more US owned, and, and by that I mean 51% uh, or more of your ownership structure have to be US residents, green card holders, or citizens. You have to have under 500 employees, and the R&D uh, money that's, that, that you win has to stay stateside, okay? Now, the remainder of the pie uh, are broad agency announcements, and that's a different kind of funding mechanism. It's more of a continuous funding grant. Um, I'll get more into broad agency announcements in just a second. 
Uh, as you see, it's a lion's share of the pie. That doesn't mean it's a lion's share of the opportunities. It just means that it's, they, they have higher award ceilings. And, and, and I'll get into that in just a second. So again, SBIRs, it's a phased funding event. So uh, just to put it in perspective, out of that um, you know, $60 billion that, that we said is set aside for private industry, about three and a half billion is uh, set aside for SBIRs. And the, this, this is a phase funding event. So in phase one, uh, it's a it's $150,000 award. Um, and this is the POC stage, so proof of concept. This is, what's important to remember here is you are dictating your proof of concept. So of course, you never want to oversell it. Um, and this is, this is all stuff that we help you with, obviously. So we apply for phase one. Um, you kind of dictate to us your proof of concept. We get onboarded on your technology. I'll get more into that towards the end of the uh, presentation. But that is the POC stage. Once you, you prove your concept, uh, we're going to start writing for you on the phase two application. And that's where we see uh, the most money. And obviously you as well, million dollars, depending on the agency. Sometimes it's one and a half, sometimes it's 2 million. Um, and that's to see you through prototype. It's usually a 24 to 27 month stage. Um, some companies are already commercially viable and it's okay. We take you back uh, several steps and, and put you in front of the government, uh, you know, in an early, excuse me, in an earlier stage uh -huh. uh, for whatever use case we might be applying for. And, and there's nothing, and that's, that's completely kosher. So phase two B, phase three, commercialization assistance. Um, I mean, just, I think a week ago, we had a client that got matched $3 million by the NSF. So they were commercially viable. They went through the whole kind of SBR uh, phase, phase, all three phases, and they got towards the end and, and they were able to raise $3 million um, externally and the government matched that dollar for dollar. So now, uh, and, and, and this is just, so it has to be up to 3 million. So you have to raise up to 3 million for them to match you at that rate. Not every agency does the matching, um, but that's something that we can discuss maybe in a private conversation uh, later down the line. So broad agency announcements. That was the blue part of the pie, if you guys don't remember. Um, and it looks like we have some more people joining us. That's great. And I just want everyone to know that's joining. Um, if you don't, uh, if you missed the first kind of part of this uh, webinar, I'm going to go ahead and be sending this as a re recording to everybody. Um, so broad agency announcements there, as I said, continuous funding events, two to five years. Um, they have higher award ceilings. So up to a hundred million, uh, our personal high success biggest success story is a $65 million prize uh, for a company. It was a broad agency announcement. And, and they're, they're different in the way they're structured, okay? So, so whereas SBIRs are phased uh, applications, these are literally, four, and they can be usually between 10 and 15 page applications. These are more like 40 to 50 page applications where you quite literally propose your R&D uh, in the form of a proposal with deadlines and dollar amounts associated with those deadlines and miles, milestones. And so you win an award and let's say you win one of these grants. So your kind of uh, obligation as a company is to hit those deadlines. If not, you can get an extension. Um, the government's an investor at the end of the day, they're not there to punish you, but you basically, you hit those deadlines, boom, get funded. Hit the deadline, boom, get funded to the next round of uh, whatever part of stage of R&D you're in. And let me double check to see if we don't have any questions yet. Uh, no, we don't. So again, anyone that joined, feel free to ask questions. I'll answer them at the end if I can. If not, uh, and it's something I can't answer, we'll go ahead and answer you uh, via email. Okay. So how can you apply this money? Um, so basically, if you are the CEO and you are involved in R&D, you can pay your salary with this money. Any subcontractors, instruments, materials, um, the facilities and administrative costs for your company. Uh, if your R&D sits with in a, in, in, on you know, level one of some business office, uh, then you can pay for your rent with this money. Uh, advisors. And then ultimately 7% is written here, is, is kind of set aside as profit. That's uh, now the NSF, National Science Foundation, which is probably one of my favorite agencies um, outside of the DOD. They have really broad categories. They changed this number to 10%. So you win one and a half million dollars, literally one one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars, kind of in the back of your pocket. I see some people are logging off. Hang on, we're gonna get to the lidar part, um, and here we are. So lidar geospatial mapping technologies. 
uh, and on the software end is what we're going to touch on now. Um, and these are kind of, these are the, the departments we're going to mostly cover. So the DOD SBIRs were just released yesterday, which is a huge deal for us and for any company that's interested in getting free money from the government. So there were 196 different topics. AFWorks, which I, uh, I discussed is going, and I'm going to discuss a lot more in just a second is opening May 17th. And that's the open topic forum. Um, where they literally will post between 20 and 25 focus, really broad focus areas, and you'll come and pitch your, your, your technology to them. Um, and and that's, that's the way that works. So there's 13 offices participating, 13 broad tech areas. Um, it's a phase one award of 150 grand, phase two, 1 million. They do have a direct to phase two. Um, it's been doubled. I think it was 750,000 last quarter. It's been, it's been doubled to one and a half million. Um, and, and so there are obviously many, many kind of arms, kind of departments within the DOD. Um, and again, so May 6th is when it opened. So here are just some very, now I'm going to give you opportunities associated with LIDAR software. Um, you have to remember these are one in a million, one in thousands of opportunities. And I pick, you know, I try to pick some, some Department of Defense broad agency announcements, some SBIRs. I try to pick, you know, one or two from uh, various agencies. I just want you to keep in mind, this is a taste of what's out there. So there, there are a lot more opportunities than what I'm going to present. So this is just one software engineering and informatics opportunity. Um, it had the LiDAR specific approach. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty long, uh, broad agency announcements are much longer. So you can literally take this, uh, copy and paste it into Google, and you'll know exactly what they're looking for. Uh, but it, it is, uh, there is LiDAR software implications within this broad agency announcement. Um, and so let's talk about AppWorks. AppWorks is, again, one of our favorite programs. So fast funding. I'm talking about you apply within 30 days, you get an answer. 30 days later, you see the money in the bank. So within 60 days, you can have, uh, if it's a direct to phase two, one and a half million dollars in your pocket. If it's a phase one, $150,000 or no, $50,000 in your pocket. Um, and, and very, no bureaucracy, five, 10 to 15 page applications. Um, and these come with a follow on BDG contract. Once you are able to source that memorandum of understanding, uh, which I'll get into in just a moment. So again, open topic. Uh, I, I mentioned this twice already. Um, and there are really two tracks. So there's the tra first track where you get the phase one money. Now it's lower than the typical SBIR because that $50,000 is meant to, it's, it's meant for you to go out there and find the MOU. Okay. So whether it's, you know, air, air travel costs, hotel costs, uh, you know, putting yourself in front of the right uh, people, uh, people that have worked in government. Uh, we call them matchmakers or, or gatekeepers. And this is, again, something that we as a company, it's in our interest to help you get to that phase two because we do work on a success fee at the end of the day. So it is in our interest for us, for you to get that one and a half million uh, on the phase two. So we do assist help in helping you navigate the uh, MOU process. Um, so it's not baked into the contract. And I can't promise anybody that if you work with us, we're going to get you a, a DOD stakeholder um, and an eventual contract with the, with the government. But we can tell you that in the past, we've helped clients to do so because it is in our interest. And so AFWorks opens May 17th. Um, this is a focus area from AFWorks. Develop, so this is so pre-release for AFWorks is May 17th. I believe this is a, uh, I believe this is a uh, opportunity from last quarter. So develop small pitch, Geiger mode, avalanche, uh, photoyoid detector rays for multifunction LIDAR receivers. That was quite the mouthful. Um, so that's just one AFWorks LIDAR uh, opportunity. And, and again, I, if, you, if you do a little of your own research, I encourage, encourage everyone to do so. Google AFWorks, see what they have. Um, NGA, uh, obviously earth modeling, within earth modeling, uh, lots of LIDAR opportunities. Um, and, and obviously, I mean, if you had to pick one agency or one kind of sector of, of, of the government, it'd be the National Geospatial Agency, DOD, that obviously would have the most kind of implications for LIDAR. And, and surprisingly enough, the Department of Agriculture has a high interest in LIDAR, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, so these are just our results from AFWorks, I believe from, from two quarters ago. 
last quarter uh we're still pending on like 10 of our submissions so we don't have those numbers in yet but we do have an 80 percent success rate so we had 10 submissions two won the full amount of one and a half million dollars on the direct to phase two six got the phase one funding i believe out of those six all six we ended up uh helping or they themselves uh were able to uh get the get the memorandum of understanding and and they're all on their way to phase two uh submissions and and winning phase two okay so here's another example um and this is just generally i i labeled it federal funding opportunity um it's it's from it's really a collaboration between the nos noaa and department of commerce uh so it's it's for advanced advancing the technology to map us waters so another mapping technology and uh this one has uh software kind of software implications within it if you if you want to take the time to read this again i'm going to send the webinar to everybody uh so you'll have more time to kind of go over uh, the details but this is just one again of many lidar opportunities um, and this one is within NOAA okay the department of agriculture so conservation of natural resources um, applications include software development or other data inten intensive technologies are encouraged to apply for topics related to priority research areas listed above so um, I mean I've spoken to multiple clients of ours that that, that they work with uh, for example, drones or, or uh, you know, earth movers or uh, robotics that, that in the farming industry, autonomous robotics that, that use LIDAR. So the so Department of Agriculture actually has a lot of money set aside specifically for your technologies um, this quarter. And NASA, NASA, this is an ongoing opportunity. These are uh, ongoing opportunities. You have uh, the swell, single photon sensitive waveform enhanced and lightweight LIDAR. That's something that, that may be an acronym that, uh, you know, the attendees might be familiar with. I'm not a technologist by any means, so uh, that's new to me. But non-mechanical dual mode beam control system for LIDARs. Again, these are very specific, very specific uh, SBIR topics. Um, and, and there are much broader ones. Um, I, I didn't even, this, so this is kind of the NSF funding. You can see there's a higher phase one. I didn't even include an NSF opportunity, which I should have, but I would encourage you to go to nsf.gov and you can literally search LIDAR or go to sbr.gov or grant.gov and you can search by keyword and see what kind of opportunities are out there. Okay. So there's really five keys to winning these grants. All right. So you, just like you wouldn't go to one VC or, you know, you wouldn't, you know, let's say you're single, you wouldn't go on Facebook and message one girl that, you know, from your past and hope that, you know, I'm definitely going to get a date with her. No, you're going to, you're, you're going to, you're going to go after as many as you can, right. Whether it's VCs or girls. So we do the same thing in our approach with federal funding. Uh, we, we try to leave no stone unturned. Um, and find multiple funding opportunities and, and cast in it as wide as possible. Uh, so we know the system. We know how to build a clear case for you. We, and, and, and I'll tell you why that's the case uh, towards the end of this presentation. But basically, uh, we've been doing this for a long time. We have over 500 active clients. Uh, we've won over one and a half billion dollars for these clients. And so we engage in a multi-submission approach. What that really means is we try for five to 10 submissions minimum of five up to 10 submissions over nine months. Now, now because of the current stimulus uh, that just took place, um, you know, and I don't know if I'll get in trouble for my superiors for mentioning this, but, but we do have a, a client case study. So she signed, I think about four months ago, two months in, we had submitted two or three proposals for her. Now we're four months or four and a half months into our engagement. So about halfway through our engagement with her, we do nine month engagements and we've done 11 full proposals. And that's only because of all the extra opportunities that have been brought up by COVID. Uh, so, so the money's out there, the government wants you to have it. And I know the private market is kind of stale right now and no one's going to be, you know, it's very unlikely you're going to see any money from any private investors right now. Uh, so the government is there for you in terms of getting you that money that's not going to touch you, uh, touch your bottom line or dilute you. Um, so again, additional opportunities. I went through broad agency announcements. We didn't discuss DARPA. Um, we didn't get into Department of Energy, uh, but LIDAR opportunities across the board. 
I really encourage you again, go to sbr.gov and, and check it out. Um, so the, the urgency is that the applications for the DOD opened now, uh, yesterday actually, and open applications start June 2nd. So if you want to get ahead of the curve, you know, early bird gets the worm. If you want to get ahead of the curve, we know, we know what topics are out there. So we know what to write up, write on. Um, and we, we know when to, and we want to be the first to submit always. That always increases our chances. So this, these are just some of our success stories. Uh, so company A, they were an AI powered facial recognition company. Um, they won $50,000 for phase one. I believe it was, through AFWorks, uh, after receiving an MOU, um, they, they're good to go for phase two. Company B, a drone-based data management software company. They won up 750 grand direct to phase two. Not sure under which program that was. Smart wearable fabrics and sensors, same. They won the full amount of 750. Okay, so how it looked like to work with us. Um, so basically, upon signing a consulting agreement with Eagle Point, Within 24 to 72 hours, we are going to have what's called a kickoff call. Let me see something. It looks like we have some questions potentially. One moment, please. And I appreciate everyone for hanging out with me. One second, let me check. Yes, okay. Are those of, okay, so someone asked if, if uh, Assad asked me if broad agency announcements are applicable for Canadian companies. The answer to that is yes. Broad agency announcements, so that whole blue part of the pie, um, they're open for any anybody, really. As you can have over 500 employees. You don't have to be US owned. As long as you are uh, you know, inventing technology that's better than anything that's being done in the US, yeah, the government will, will be glad to kind of invest in that. Um, someone asked me, do BAAs have specific dates that they open? Yeah, they do actually. Um, they open generally, I, I mean, randomly, but what's the point to note, they're ongoing. So really for the next like two or three years, I can give a webinar on that broad agency announcement I just posted and it would still be there. Uh, so they're, they're, they're very long, you know, they're posted and they stay there until someone wins it. Um, and you can have more than one winner for one opportunity. So yeah, uh, the, the dates vary. And that's what we're here for. We're here, we're here for helping you find the right opportunities with dates that align with what your company is poised to handle. Um, and again, Brian, I would love to have a private conversation with you later in an email, in a, in a video conference. So what to expect? Kickoff call 24 to 72 hours after signing the agreement, okay? Uh, on that call, what we're gonna do is basically set the scene for what our submission process is gonna look like for the first quarter or three months of our engagement. Or I guess you can say the first third since this is a nine month engagement. Um, and you're gonna be on the phone with someone from our professional department. So a colleague of mine, his name is Iran. He's the director of this department. Uh, and this is the department where all our technologists and our analysts and content writers sit. Uh, you'll be assigned a project manager and they're gonna be kind of, you know, holding your hand through the entire process, getting you registered for the portals, getting the dunce code um, and walking you through the entire process uh, and really what we, you know, to be completely transparent, it would be unfair to say otherwise, we require 60 to 80 hours on your side on the first submission, just to onboard us on your technology, because obviously no one knows your tech better than you do. Um, now, some, some of the attendees on this webinar might already have won an SBIR or a broad agency announcement, or might have uh, insanely great white pages and decks. And that'll save a lot of time on the 60 day hours. You can cut that in half. So if you're an SBR winner already, you're going to say we only need 20 hours on your first submission because uh, it's already there. So every submission thereafter, we do most of the legwork. It's about 90% on us, right? So when we say 10 hours or less, that's really 10 hours of you brainstorming with us on the use case or, uh, you know, you know, to, to kind of specify what we're, you know, it's going to be a more specific opportunity. It's going to be different than anything else we applied for. So we want to, you to help us kind of expand on that vertical. So that's what that 10 hours is required for. Um, so again, five to 10 submissions throughout the year. I want to be very clear on this. We promise up, we, our guarantee is five minimum. Uh, but as I mentioned, we can do, it's in our interest to do more. So if, I, if we can do 20 submissions in nine months, which is insane, uh, we will do it. Again, the end goal here is to cast them as wide as possible, put out applications that are, are exceed industry uh, best practices, 
and 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 win these applications and because again we win when you win we'll say it 10 more times before the end of this webinar even though i think i have two slides left Alrighty, um let's keep going this is a really interesting uh client case study this is actually this is a great slide so i'm glad you guys all stuck around to see this so this is a client they signed on february 12th or actually they had their first call they had a face-to-face -face meeting with uh, a biz dev guy like me on March 29th. Um, so we did a pre-analysis for them April 10th. Uh, whether it was that, so, a pre-analysis can either be uh, someone from our professional department giving opportunities that they think you'll be eligible for with all our amounts associated and deadlines, uh, a two-page document with maybe four or five opportunities, or it could be a, a chat that you might have with someone in our professional department with with a biz dev guy like me on the line. Um, and, and, and they'll kind of break it down for you that way. Uh, and then, so May 1st, the guy signed, the, the, the client signed a contract with us. May 2nd, we had our kickoff call, uh, June 23rd. So about a month and so AppWorks direct, uh, to phase two was submitted on June 23rd. Now, the reason this might've taken a little bit of time is because AppWorks might not have opened until late May that, that quarter, I'm not sure. Um, and that's, that's just by virtue of when he signed the contract. Uh, so again, now is the time to sign if anyone's interested in winning money right now, uh, just because everything is, uh, is opening. August 15th, he won a broad agency announcement with the Army Research Lab. Uh, or no, he submitted an application with the Army Research Lab. August 16th, he ended up getting a contract, a memorandum of understand where, understanding with AppWorks. Uh, which is great. He got that contract. And September 9th, we applied for a pitch, uh, pre uh, basically a pitch with the NSF. So with the NSF is you, I'm so sorry if you hear my four month year old infant crying in the background. I'm sure everyone's familiar with that at this point. So my NSF SBR uh, pitch, NSF, what they want you to do is, is submit a pitch proposal. And if they like it, they'll invite you for a full uh, submission. So we love the NSF because they have really broad categories and we have great success with them. Okay, so here's the rest of it. October, we did an Army Applications Lab broad agency announcement submission. So you can see right now you've seen already NSF SBIR, AppWorks, which comes with the contract and, and then a broad agency announcement. And then another NSF SBIR plus XTech Search. XTech Search is another B2G SBIR program. And in December, uh, they still, this is, must, have, must not be an updated slide, uh, but you can see, we continue to uh, apply on their behalf. Um, so that's a great client case study. I'm glad that I left, the, that I had the slide on here. Um, I wish I, I updated to see, you know, where they sat in December. Um, and again, it, here's a little bit more about us. So a little bit more about our company. Uh, just to back up, and, and a lot of people like to know this. So we started in, so we're an Israeli company, all right? We're based in Israel, but our, our clients are U.S. based, okay? So we started as Machshava uh, Chopshit, in Hebrew means free mind. And we basically attacked the whole gamut of life science technologies in Israel and got funding from the Israeli government. Then we saw so much success that we decided to take this to the EU. And then after the anthrax scare uh, in 2002, we went international and became the free mind group. Okay, so the FreeMind Group has been around uh, for 20 years. Um, it's been, it was established in 1999. We have over one and a half billion. Uh, we have won over, over one and a half billion dollars in awards for our clients. We have over 500 active clients. So what that means is these are clients that are signing with us on a year to year basis. So like, like I try to say to everybody, SBIRs are really a bottomless hole of opportunities and money that the government wants to give you. And we can keep going after these opportunities year after year. So really the ultimate goal we have is to become an integral part of your revenue stream, um, not just in the nine month engagement, but to continue our, our relationship year by year. So, you know, once we win a bunch of money for you in, in nine months, you're gonna wanna keep going. Um, so again, we specialize in R&D grants and contracts. Um, Freemind Group, our company as a whole has over one, I think we're up to like 130 in-house uh, analysts, writers, project managers, uh, professionals, if you'd like to call them. And again, Eagle Point specifically, the company that I represent, the company that's relevant to everyone attending today, uh, works with all the tech industries outside of life sciences. So now I'm going to go back and see if this is my contact information. Um, 
uh, everyone's going to get an email uh, with the with, with the webinar and the recording. But if you want to reach out to me first, here's my it's Ari A R I at EaglePointFunding.com. I'm going to go back up to the chat box, see if I have any more questions that I might have missed. And please, right now, if you have any questions.